doing great, thank you. So glad to see you. And you're feeling well? Everything is good? Yeah. Good, good. I'm Why glad. do I look sick? No, no, you know. No. You know, you've had some things, and I'm Yeah, I'm a few things here and there. Yeah, I'm good. You last night. Yes. Got a shout, kind of Elaine Bennis in a way got a shout out. Yes. During the well, let's show that clip so people know what's going on. I I don't think the Democratic Party should be surprised that so many Americans believe yada yada yada. <laughs> That's weird, huh? That is so bizarre. I guess uh, <laughs> I guess she's gonna pick me as her running mate. Is that what that means? <laughs> I think, you, if anything, <laughs> she would be your running mate. I mean, come on now. That's pretty, that must be yeah, kind of exciting. Yeah, so, well. No? I, you know, it's, it's bizarre. It's kind of like worlds colliding yeah. and then some, right? Yeah, I when mean, you become very... part, such a part of the fabric of, of society. The culture, yeah. That you're, you're now like a catchphrase in a debate. Yeah, I mean, totally. It's like, I imagine what the lady from the Where's the Beef commercial must have felt like <laughs> so many years ago. <laughs> It'll be weird when they say no soup for you. <laughs> it'll be weird. Yeah. <laughs> you got half of it. <laughs> so, do you feel like you have any kind of like uh, extraordinary insight into the election and, and what goes on in the White House because of the show that you just did for seven seasons? Um, yeah, I think I, I, I mean, I've learned a lot about politics. And, yeah. and, and I've got a sense of the. Uh, of the true anxiety that probably a lot of these people feel uh, going in and trying to sell themselves as a as a candidate, as a brand, and make a stamp and a quick a, a stamp sort of a, a, as themselves, but quickly and yeah, right. and uh, just to boil yourself down whew. and also to not do the not things you don't do are probably more important as we saw I feel like I learned what it's like to be a candidate from your show and then I go oh wait a minute I don't know if it's really like this at all it is, it is yeah. Yeah. yeah and as a matter of fact as I was watching the debate tonight I was it, it gave me a lot of anxiety I had to kind of turn away you when know? you would watch a debate like that, like a couple of years ago, would you be thinking, oh, how can I use this for the show? Totally, 100%. And does that yeah. change the way you watched it tonight? <laughs> you could just relax and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've, se I've seen it now a few times. Yeah, you, know you have, I mean? yeah. yeah. Boy, it would have been great if CNN had just slipped uh, one of you, one of Selena's debate clips oh, into that program. It, it would have fit in really perfectly. It really would have fit in. Yeah. That's the thing that's crazy about the whole thing. Yes. What is the moratorium? Like, what kind of time period? Like, I don't know what I can say about the last episode of Veep, even though it was months ago that it aired. I think can we can we talk about it. Can we now say what happened? Why not? Why shouldn't we? Okay. I mean, I think, unless somebody tells me I'm wrong, but yeah, go for okay. it. Okay, all right. Okay, go. So there's the ending of the show, yes. which Selena finally, again, becomes president of yes. the United States. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, you have, everybody applauds, but she's like... It's not for real. The, it's it's not. not for real, number one, and number two, she's a terrible person. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we did it once. Why not again? Exactly. But, um, okay, so, and then at the very end of the show. Yes. So it's 20, what, like something, four years they, later? They, ju they jump ahead 24, 25 years later. That's and right. And we're watching the news. Yes. And Selena Meyer has died. Yes, and we're at her funeral, the yes. coverage of her funeral. And almost immediately after, it just like kind of right in the middle of the coverage of her funeral, Tom Hanks dies and steals her thunder completely. Completely, yes. That's exactly right. And that, incidentally, it's, I, I love that joke so much because we <laughs> spent a lot of time talking about his I iconic career and, and uh, within the context of the show. And, of course, it is an iconic career that he's had. But um, the, the, it was a callback, in fact, to the pilot episode of Veep in which we reference uh, Tom Hanks and uh, what if something that Selena did gets bumped out of the news cycle if something bad happens, like if Tom
Tom Hanks dies, and everybody looks at actually it was Matt Walsh playing the character, uh -huh. like saying, "Why would you say something like that? Tom Hanks is is not going to die." And, <laughs> and and then of course we we use that joke at the end of the episode. Which what is I was really wondering great. is if Tom knew he was going to die okay, on the show. Okay, so get a load of this. Okay. <laughs> so I we're we're in the uh, we're in the final mix for the show. We we've locked pictures. So this is you know we're about to turn it in to HBO and then it's done done you can't touch it and we're listening to the playback and one of our producers says hey um who talked to Tom about this <laughs> and we all sort of looked at each other and and we had all forgotten to be in touch with Tom Hanks and so I mean we had gotten permission to use clips from his movies and stuff but and so all of a sudden, I was furiously writing emails, an email to him, email to his agent, texting him, trying to reach him, because we were under the gun. I mean, literally, really, we had no yeah. time. And uh, fortunately, while we were in, um, in the sound mix, within about 20 minutes, I heard back from him. And the first thing he said was, Absolutely, I explained to him the joke and he got it completely. And then his second thing was he was complaining that he wasn't cast as the abortion doctor in an earlier episode. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it was, was a lose great... lose for Tom. Exactly. He, no, but he was a really good sport about it. <laughs> well, yeah. and that's, I mean, that's a good sport when you're calling to somebody to really to tell them that they've passed away yeah. and they handle it well. Well, yes. that's, that's why he's America's most beloved, I exactly. guess. Exactly. All right, when we come back, we're going to see uh, a clip. I'll let me may remind you of what happened on television tonight. This Julie evening. Louis Dreyfus is here. We'll be right back. Tell you something about okay. Justice, Senator. When I was coming up, as a lawyer, I didn't have to remind everyone I was a woman every 10 seconds because they never let me forget it. I smiled all through the casual grabbing of my behind and all the secret meetings on the golf course that I wasn't invited to. So how about giving a little thanks to the women like me who built the ladder that you use to get up onto your soapbox. How about for once in your life, you stop whining, you stop complaining, and just man up? Because I honestly, I... Yeah, that's right, you heard me, man up. That is Julie Lee Dreyfus in Veep. It's over, there's no more Veep to watch. But if you haven't watched it, go back from the beginning and watch it all the way through to Tom Hanks' death. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I know this is maybe embarrassing, but right. you've got eight Emmys for acting. You've got 11 Emmys total. You, Thank you. You have, you're tied for the most acting Emmys ever from, from any comic actress, right? Or any actor, male, female, no matter what. You're tied with Cloris Leachman. Bless her heart. Yeah. She is 93 years old. Yes. And are you looking forward to really crushing her in, <laughs> in September? Is this? She's going down. <laughs> Remember Cloris Leachman and Young Frankenstein? Oh, fantastic. Oh, my God. Frau Remember? Blucher. Yeah. He was my boyfriend. Uh, yeah, oh, she oh, was great. She was incredible. Yeah, and you're yeah. better, though. You know, you're going to be ahead of her. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is the number of awards that really... Matters? Uh, yeah, matters most. I, I'd ask uh, where you keep all these awards, because you have so many <laughs> Emmys, and there's only one trophy that you display in your home. Yes. You know? And yes. that is this one right here. Explain yes. what that is. I'll tell you what that is. That is, I got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame yes. a few years back, and they misspelled my <laughs> name. <laughs> and for true, it was the most extraordinary moment. And so I had them, they, they had to fix it. And I said, oh, oh, save the misspelled part that Julia Luis drive us. And so I have that and I, it's a prized possession of mine. And I, it's a, just a, a good reminder to keep me in my place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it, good, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. They yeah. jackhammered that out beautifully too. Yeah. You also, a really, a great award, especially for a comedy actor, is the Mark Twain Prize, which you received last yes. year. Yes. And that's a big deal. It's at the Kennedy Center. There are so you. many. Everyone came to pay tribute to you. Was that, did you enjoy that experience? Well, let me tell you something. I got this letter asking me to come and, uh, to the Kennedy Center. And when I first got this letter, I misread it. 
And I thought they were asking me to speak about someone else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? I'm not going to go all the way to DC and <laughs> tout somebody else's <laughs> accolades. Right. And then I read it again, and I thought, oh my god, it's me. They want to, it, oh, of course I'll go. <laughs> and so that was actually how I opened the whole, I, telling that story on myself, which was kind of true. <laughs> and then, um, uh, but it was, it was really scary, to tell you the truth, because you come out, and there are like 3,000 people sitting there. And they're very serious, kind of, for a very the audience, yeah. yeah, wealthy people mostly, <laughs> and yeah, and you're and they put you in a booth, and you have to, you know, and I, I sort of made an Evita joke when I was up there, and <laughs> uh, but I was nervous as hell, and about because they say we're going to give you this award for comedy. Congratulations, now speak for 15 minutes. So it's sort of like you have to prove that you're worthy of it, mm -hmm. which is how I looked at it, which is kind of the truth, mm -hmm. and so I was just. In my pants, to tell you the truth. I was really nervous. How long nervous. did you worry about and work on what you were going to say? Well, I worked on it. I worried, please. I worried <laughs> about it from the get-go. Uh -huh. And I worked on it for a number of weeks leading up. And, uh, but I had an epiphany on the plane ride there. Actually, the plane ride from New York to D.C. because I had done your oh, show right, in New York. Oh, right, you with us, yeah. And I had this epiphany, which was to, I did this whole long bit about... Uh, considering myself a dramatic actress, and I was sort of put off that this was only for comedy, and uh, that I had auditioned for Merchant of Venice, and I didn't get it, and I thought it was sort of a joke that I hadn't gotten it, blah, 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 blah. And so then I end up doing a, this monologue, Portia's monologue from Merchant of Venice, but I did it like Elaine Bennis. Ah. And um, and that was what I that was my epiphany that I got on the plane. So that was that worked. Yeah, out. well, that's Last right. You, you, I guess. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be I here. I hope you beat that Cloris Leachman <laughs> at the Emmy. Oh, she's, had, she's worn this crown for too long. <laughs> Julie Louis drives everybody. The final season of Beep is on HBO. We'll be back with Steve Martirano. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings.